got a little quick update here courtesy of a clip courtesy of the podcast throwing fits they've actually updated everybody to let them know that sporty and rich are due to open his new store in soho it might actually be open already which i find to be absolutely crazy to be honest but if anything this um sporty and rich opening store opening actually is kind of goes on to solidify my modus operandi my mo my pov my mindset that stuff like imposter syndrome and whatnot doesn't exist or you shouldn't believe in it because if brands like sporty and rich can get to a level where they can open a multi-story store somewhere in the depths of fucking soho in new york um you know clearly showing that they're doing great things and clearly selling the product even though i think it's super mediocre it clearly shows that if you put your mind to it and you just keep plugging away that nothing if you know outside the laws of physics is impossible really and truly if you think about it nothing is impossible so that's why i don't kind of buy into the idea of imposter syndrome or you know whatever it may be when it comes to the arts or entertainment industry because for the most part most of us out here that are kind of trying to make a career make some ground in that space are just making up as we go along anyway so it's for you to feel like you need to have imposter syndrome or you know as a false sense of humility or something some people talk about that also in that way they kind of want to don't want to seem like they believe in themselves too much so you talk about imposter syndrome we don't really believe in it but if you do believe in imposter syndrome please listen to this clip and let it be known that i don't think it exists i don't think it's real and most likely um if you put your mind to it you can achieve all things because sporty and rich has got a fucking store in soho my friend sporty and rich regardless of what you think of it sporty and rich is opening up a store in soho it's crazy you said is like a coronation moment i couldn't be more blown away she has been doing this for like 10 years now emily went from like in influencer individual to mood board to like actual tangible products she took girly influencer la she almost like basically invented that whole genre which has now been ripped off I was gonna say. into oblivion well, well, like, people are complaining about like oh she just stole this graphic from like new york health and rack club what like you are now showing <laughs> your whole ass about like not understanding yeah. what most graphics are streetwear, blah, blah, blah. Like everything is referential. Everything Especially is a reference this to something style else. Of clothing, yeah. People maybe knock mood board to brand like pipeline because what she's doing by like creating this entire lifestyle yeah. via a mood board and then extrapolating tangible product from that, that's what all brands do. So mood boards were not invented on Instagram. Mood yeah. boards were invented on fucking cork boards with yeah. like thumbtacks and yeah. like photos ripped out of magazines. What Emily's doing is doing this out in the public, which is like almost admirable in a way. <laughs> and also you can connect to it on more levels than just like the and product you can connect to it at the source but so many people i think are so fried with their understanding or lack thereof of how this industry works <laughs> where like the tumblr generation when mood boarding became this thing that moved out of the back offices to like the internet people still like understood what was happening and how brands operated we are now so far removed people don't realize this is what every single brand exactly. has done forever yeah. anyway they speak about that for a few bits and bobs but you know you can't really take what they say about throwing about sport and rich too seriously because i get the feeling they're probably friends with the emily oberg girl and um, full disclosure on my end i did um meet her once when i picked her to be part of this panel that i did when i used to work at this company i did this like you know streetwear panel discussion thing um i think it was in was it in, was it in new york or was it here it might have been in new york i forgot where it was exactly but regardless i put her you know leah mcsweeney and a few other people on the panel talking about streetwear and i think i'm actually might have invited kyle from brain did also so i've met her once had some brief correspondence online and shit via email seemed fairly pleasant but again you know i'm the guy responsible for her getting a little check and shit so people are always going to be pleasant and nice to you when you're that in that position so that was fairly decent so i'm sure that isn't really a good kind of you know kind of cosign of her as a person but one thing i've never kind of understood is just the the kind of baby gloves that kind of brand gets dealt with because at this point if you're 10 years in you're a legit brand you're doing your thing but it just feels like it's never really evolved sporting rich it's never really kind of progressed any further from when i used to see it kind of all over the all over tumblr all over blogs all over early instagram it never really has kind of evolved and one of the things i sort of remember sporting rich being really kind of flagrant for is that they do these amazing very aspirational lookbook pictures and stuff right um lifestyle images but sometimes or more often than not 
the only thing that was actually made by Sporting Rich in the actual lookbook spread itself was like a t-shirt or like a baseball cap. But the actual interesting pieces, like a nice pair of pleated pants or whatever it may be, or just stuff that the model kind of brought along themselves or, you know, stuff from other brands that they kind of bought and just put into the sort of shoot. So the idea behind it was essentially basically luxing up merch, luxing up very basic gear, making it look very kind of, you know, expensive and you know worthwhile when actually it was just kind of standard trip you know whatever gildan printed t-shirts um but just kind of styled to look really amazing now over time clearly it's changed having looked at their flipping website they clearly starting to make their own stuff cut and sew there's fleeces and little bra tops and skirts and shit and whatnot and some nice shorts and polos but it's still incredibly mid it's still incredibly, incredibly average. And I'm just really surprised. And again, it goes to show, like I said, imposter syndrome shouldn't exist because it clearly goes to show if you are able to craft an aesthetic or put together a taste level, no, have if you have some sort of taste, if you have an aesthetic, if you have a kind of a point of view, a story to tell through branding, through clothing, most likely there are others out there that probably share your type your same sentiments but just waiting for someone to package it in a particular way and once you package a particular way they're going to be there ready and willing to sort of purchase it and buy it because nowadays you know clearly through the sales and whatnot people are clearly into it to the point where they're going to open a store in soho which is flipping nuts to me personally because i feel like the brand is incredibly incredibly average but one thing that she did really well i think as a person, personality, Emily Oberg, she definitely sort of got herself aligned with all the right core people. She's kind of closely aligned with and it's pally pally with all the right people so that in media, online, from the real industry shakers, shakers and whatever you call them and gatekeepers and whatnot you're not going to hear a bad word said about them but when it comes to sort of like you know regular folks like me and you and i who are just kind of viewing this stuff on the outside in as consumers we can say what we want we can say we don't like this shit but as long as you've got all the right people in the right places kind of backing up what you're doing and kind of you know speaking well of you and putting your position and shit the kind of you know the sky's your limit really when it comes to how far you can kind of progress with this thing but i was generally surprised when i heard they're going to open a store because i couldn't imagine how much more of this stuff you can put out it just feels like a bit of a boring aesthetic it kind of felt like it died on tumblr but for some reason it's still surviving now maybe it makes actually sense why it is because i think i've seen like a lot of those sort of like younger gen z fashion it girls or whatnot like the addison rays and shit and a few other people maybe hayley biebers they sort of adopted this aesthetic now it's, it's kind of come full circle again this whole um what do you call it late 90s early 2000s um athleisure sort of aesthetic with the white pop socks and the you know the sambas and the running sneakers and the dad hats to go to the gym and shit this sort of like thing has kind of been adopted by a lot of these girlies who you see them kind of carrying a starbucks cup or a green juice you know on the way to you know to jump into their tesla or lambo truck or shit after doing some fucking pilates for 10 minutes so clearly this aesthetic clearly has come back around so congrats to her in that respect but i just never got it i really never got the sporty and rich thing i think it looks fairly average and fairly shitty personally for me but it's just nice to see nowadays that they are actually starting to make their own cut and sew pieces it's not just because before it, it would be like imagine this shirt you see here with this lady wearing a sweatshirt and the shorts and whatnot it would just be like oh maybe the socks are sporty and rich but the whole of it is just models own but essentially this whole outfit minus the shoes is sporty and rich and maybe the idea says you know because she's got a partnership with them which clearly ties in there but it's nice to see that she's actually starting to make you know great looking stuff maybe this isn't the best angle here this kind of stuff doesn't look like it's made the best here the cut or maybe this is the way the girl's kind of bending over doesn't look the greatest but it's just great to see that she's making some cut and sew things here and there this quarter zip fleece again decent but pff, that embroidery is a little bit tough to kind of get into but again if you have imposter syndrome, please look at what Sporty and Rich are doing. It feels like nothing more than a glorified merch line modeled by really attractive women with great aesthetics and great kind of creative direction. And they're now going to have an actual brick and mortar store in Soho. So for me, it goes to show that if you put your mind to it, that all things are achievable if you really put your mind to it. So big up, um, you know, Emily Oberg for doing that in that respect. But I don't know. I just feel like the the kid gloves that it gets treated with online with some people is just bizarre to me because i feel like if anybody else made this shit they'd be on their neck like people say a lot of shit about jound but i feel like there's a there's a lot more 
taste. There's a lot more design. There's a lot more talent, artistic creation, whatever it may be that goes into making jound clothing then goes into sporty and rich personally for me way more goes into it i've been way i'll be a lot more happier to spend you know 200 dollars plus on a fucking jound sweatsuit that has jound written on the fucking you know chest you know in really small fucking font and with a really kind of heavy fabric um cotton whatever it may be then i would be to spend the same amount on fucking sporty and rich stuff i just feel like it's a little bit vapid and a little bit you know whatever it may be but clearly I'm in the minority because this stuff is clearly selling enough for them to open a store up. So what do I bloody know in here? The prices are, are fairly decent, a lot decent than I expect them to be. Um, this sports bra here in this washed high, what's that? Washed hydrogens and white is 68 pounds, which I feel like it's a lot cheaper than what I hoped. I thought it'd be in my head. Um, even this, so that, that set with the bra top and the skirt is going to cost you about what? 170 pretty decent price the fleece is about 160 uh 120 for the sweatshirt so it's not too shabby it kind of falls within the streetwear range pricing but it's also you know not within luxury brands so it's not you know they're not selling t-shirts like fucking uh, balenciaga but it's still kind of decent enough for you to kind of feel like you're buying something worthwhile like the t-shirt here's like 52 pounds right this classic tee this pop socks are like what 24 pounds um the hats are uh, 48 pounds but yeah it just looks so basic to me really 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 basic and average but again i'm probably not the intended customer or target market for it so big up um support your original ability and for what they're doing but again nothing is impossible if they can put out a brand also you can so get sketching get designing and get printing those flipping designs